I am convinced that I need to acquaint myself with the Second Temple literature. It seems to hold the key to so many questions. What is the whole body of this literature? Where do you recommend that a novice start? Can you outline a quick plan for becoming acquainted with this body of literature? And also, what languages were these works originally written in? Well, fortunately, you can you can read this material in in English. You know, so you know, in theory, it doesn't take much to become acquainted. If if by acquainted we mean giving it a, a one or two read throughs, that's that you could do that in a few weeks if you had the time. You know, to do the reading. Uh, what, what, let's go back though to what it encompasses. Second Temple per, period literature. Again, the, the date ranges. We'll just use round numbers here. We'll just say 500 BC to 70 AD or 100 AD. Let's just you know tack on the other 30 years there. So that's the date range. So it's stuff written during that that span of time. Typically, again, that includes these groups. And again, these are these are just the way modern people have grouped them. It includes the Old Testament Apocrypha, Old Testament Apocrypha. There are New Testament Apocrypha that don't count in this because that's later than 100 AD. So Old Testament Apocrypha, you know, books like Tobit, you know, First and Second Maccabees, you know, that kind of thing, just the Apocrypha. Then there are the Pseudepigrapha. It's another, again, category collection of books. The Dead Sea Scrolls. And specifically, what I mean there is the non-biblical material. So Dead Sea Scrolls basically have two kinds of material. They're copies of the Bible uh, or commentaries about certain biblical books that have lots of biblical content in them. Okay, But let's just lop off copies of the, of the Old Testament. What you're left with then are items that were either produced by the people at Qumran, and that tends to be called sectarian literature. That would be stuff they wrote about themselves and their history and their beliefs, okay? You know, whoever the people at Qumran were. And then it's also it also includes the non-biblical stuff also includes stuff that they collected that somebody else during the period would have written, but they had copies of it or they made copies of it. Things like, okay, the Book of Enoch. Okay, they you know, nobody claims that the people at Qumran wrote the Book of Enoch, but they had copies of Enochian material there. They kept it. Think of it as a library, a repository. So there's biblical and non-biblical. So the non-biblical stuff from Qumran among the Dead Sea Scrolls would be included in Second Temple literature. And you can, you know, there are lots of, that's available, you know, in translation in English. Another example would be Philo, the works of Philo. He would be in the first century AD, a very famous Jewish writer known for allegorical interpretation, trying to reconcile uh, the Hebrew Bible with, you know, Greek, you know, secular pagan Greek thinking and material. Uh, so he adopted the allegorical method to do that, again, to marry the two. Josephus is another example of Second Temple literature. So th- those are really the big five, Apocrypha, Pseudepigrapha, non-biblical Dead Sea Scroll stuff, Philo, and Josephus. Now, you could make that list, write it out on a piece of paper, and then go look on the internet for English translations of that stuff, and you could read all of it. It's available for free. You don't have to pay for it. Published translations, especially more recent ones, are going to be better, you know, because all of these things are preserved in more than one manuscript, you know, and in some cases in more than one language, and so scholars come through that stuff and have to do textual criticism and judgments on which reading is the best and all that stuff, just like, you know, your Old New Testament. So modern translations are, are better, but again, if you don't have money to spend on that stuff, you can, you know, do pretty well, you know, using stuff that's out there online. I would also recommend, though, getting introductions to this material. So you could buy, you know, a book like Larry Hellyer's book. His last name is spelled H E L Y E R. Okay, Larry Hellyer. Uh he has a book called Exploring Jewish Literature of the Second Temple Period: A Guide for New Testament Students. It's published by InterVarsity. It's an introduction to Second Temple literature. Uh, so that that that's a good book to have because he'll talk about this material, and again, that that helps you again build a a framework, you know, for approaching it, knowing 
knowing when it was written, what the books are about, you know, before you jump into them, what were the historical circumstances, what were the occasions of the material, you know, that sort of stuff. What are things to look for as you read, you know, all that. So Hellier's book is a good guide. There are other guides that are that are more beefy. That Hellier's book is a paperback. It's probably still 400 pages or whatever. There are other bigger books that are a lot more expensive. Um, but Hellier is one I recommend. He, he is, you know, an evangelical. Most of the time that, that isn't going to matter. And I think in this case, it really wouldn't matter. The only reason I bring it up is because if, if you're reading an academic book on this stuff, they, they just devote a lot of space to stuff that the average person is not going to care about. What's the redaction, the editorial history of the Book of Enoch? You know, how did these manuscripts, you know, come together who who did the editing and why? You know, what portions are authentic and you know, who cares? Okay, you just want something that deals with the text of these books as we have it. Because you're going to read them and you just want to know, again, what, what in the world is the thing about? What's it saying? What are its circumstances? So on and so forth. Because when it comes to the usefulness of this material for interpretation – that's the kind of thing you're going to get in, in academic commentaries and journal articles, things like that. But you can get a, a, a good acquaintance just by getting a basic guide and then reading the stuff. If you wanted to break it down into specific, uh, you know, of the big five categories here, big, the big five uh, contenders here, you could buy a separate introduction to just the Apocrypha. I recommend David De Silva's book. It's the most current. David's a good second temple scholar. He's a guy I happen to know. Um, I mean, there are other ones, but I think his, his book is the best right now. Pseudepigrapha, you could get Charlesworth's two volumes. Every one of – it has all the pseudepigrapha, you know, at least up until the, the point of putting that book together, the ones that anybody cared about. Um, has them all in there. They all have introductory material. Who wrote it? You know, what's the best guess for when it was written and who wrote it? What's it about? What kind of theological emphases does it have? So that's a good introduction, the, the, the two-volume set by Charlesworth. Uh, same for Dead Sea Scrolls. You can get books about the Dead Sea Scrolls. So you could go with a one-volume introduction like Hellier, or you could start to drill down into, into specifics. But it just depends on how much time you have to read the, the stuff and do you want current translations or are you content with stuff that's free on the Internet? It just it's it's more or less up up to you. Now we have a link uh, for this too that I'll give Trey. Uh, some of these books that I mentioned and others that I didn't mention are included in my recommended reading list on my website. So we'll make sure that there's a link uh, to that on this episode page as well. Uh, the last thing, I, as I recall, the the, um, the question about languages. Uh, what languages were these works originally, you know, written in? Mo for the most part, if, if you're talking about the original compositions of these books, whether they be Apocrypha, Pseudepigrapha, whatever, it's going to be Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek are the big three. Now, a number of these books can also be found. They were preserved in uh, other languages because they were translated into those other languages, things like Coptic or Syriac or Latin. Ethiopic in the case of the Book of Enoch and some Book of Jubilees and things like that. Uh, but as far as the original composition, it's going to be either Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. 